Welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you're here. This is a place for everybody because I love everybody. So everybody is welcome. And I want you to feel comfortable and at home and feel blessed and happy. And this guest that I have today, you're going to absolutely adore because I do. And uh, we just met and I already adore him by watching all of his stuff. Michael J. Patterson. Michael, thank you for coming and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, Absolutely. So, Michael, you are an actor. You've been in so many different things and such a variety of things from yes. uh, from Hunger Games uh -huh. to Defiled, you know, whatever, like such a variety of things. So, uh, first of all, though, I want to start with you grew up in D.C., is that right? Yes, born and raised um, and in the D.C. area. We call it the DMV, Maryland, Virginia, D.C. So, right. yes, this is my home uh, town area. Yeah. And and uh, acting is something in your blood. Is that true? That is correct. Uh, my mother uh, is an actor and director as well. Um, and uh, I grew up hearing about her stories. And I wanted to, you know, pay homage to her um, and uh, make her proud and said that I'm going to buy her a big old house and these things uh, from my acting money. This is what I said when I was a kid. And uh, so... At 12 years old, um, I started pursuing it in a play called The Wiz, um, and I did pretty good as The Wiz, actually. And then I uh, got my thespian uh, points, that's what we call it, in uh, high school. Then I went to college, did a lot of uh, shows in college and in church, because I did a lot of plays in church as well. Uh, I tried to do the Hollywood thing in my early 20s. I failed miserably because God said that he's, that's not what he wants me to do. Um, and then I uh, became an IT professional uh, for like 23 years, um, you know, to pay the bills because my mom said, you need to go to school and get a degree so you can pay bills and still do your acting. And that's what I did. Uh, kids later, uh, marriage later, uh, divorce later. Uh, and then uh, God said, OK, at the age of 36, uh, I want you to go back out there and see what you got. <laughs> I said, yeah, right. You know, that's not happening. Right. And so I went on ahead and on a whim, I uh, heard from a friend um, to go to acting classes. Uh, Cheryl Felicia Rhodes, uh, who was my teacher, uh, helped me to become the actor that I am today outside of my mom and uh, other uh, uh, places that I learned uh, to become a better actor in New York, um, as well as here in the Baltimore area. I did those classes, um, did some films, short films later. Uh, a couple of web series later, and then I started getting into the big films uh, in indie. Um, I'm, a big, I'm a big indie guy. I love indie films because you're able to really express yourself even more and not have constraints. But um, moving forward, I started getting into the faith-based filming because I've always wanted to be in faith-based filming, but it's pretty hard to get in faith-based filming when they don't know you. And, you know, so once I got my foot in the door with that, I started, you know, ex ex excelling uh, with... Uh, uh, roles uh, that were, you know, day player to supporting to strong supporting to leads now, actually. And it's just all about faith. And it's about um, believing Christ and all that he has for you and taking it one day at a time, because you can't you don't want to be a star overnight. Uh, it's just too much uh, uh, pressure for an individual, especially these kids nowadays that are getting that. Um, so you just want to take it one day at a time, have fun and uh, continue to grow, keep learning. And I know you asked me one question. I went like really far with you. <laughs> you said it a, a lot, a lot. So we're going to unpackage some of that. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> 12 years old, you started acting and you obviously must have loved it right away. Yeah, and, but, but, but then, you know, as you grew and you did the high school thing and you did stuff in college and then got your real job, <laughs> your job <laughs> that, um, paid the bills. But uh, you were also an athlete during yes. that. And one of the things that you did, Michael, I have to tell you, I'm scared to death of, and that is hurdles. They, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you were really good. You were great at track. Did, so did you do track in high school? I and did track since like I was maybe seven or eight years old. Um, you know, you do the AAU, uh, AAU um, you know, track meets, and then... You go to uh, middle school, you race, high school, you start becoming even more of a uh, an athlete. Um, so I didn't start hurdles until I was in the 11th grade. Um, and 
I was scared like you were um, of them because I'm like, I can't run full speed at these things. You're crazy, right? And uh, they're 110 high hurdles. So I'm not really tall. I'm only 5'10 and a half. So it's like I wasn't as tall back then as well. I was like maybe 5'8", 5'9", or whatever. And <laughs> the coach was like, I need you to go over those sticks. You have what it takes. And I'm like, not in my mind, I do, you know, but – he helped me with the hurdle drills and then I went through the hurdles and then I started getting really fast through the hurdles. And uh, I actually made it to the States in Virginia and I was like, I'm a hurdler. And I ran the 400 meter hurdles as well. So those are my two things that I was really good at outside of the 100 and 200 and long jump, because you're not going to be fast forever. You know, your, your speed goes down after 25, 26 years old, but you're still fast enough to compete in their hurdles and um, the one tens. So I, did that and I tried to, you know, I, I ran uh, pro uh, for three different uh, teams and Olympic development teams because I wanted to make the Olympics in uh, since 96, uh, 2000, 2004, and 2009. Didn't make that's, it, of course, as you can see, but yeah, yeah, but that's huge. I lived, I lived the dream and it was fun and I and it helped me with my discipline in acting actually because you have to be very disciplined as an, as an athlete in track and field. So it helps you to first half faith and, you know, keep, keep strong in your faith. And then secondly, to keep pursuing, um, because it's, you feel like you're by yourself as an actor already. You have to have support and all of that, of course, but it's, it takes you to have faith to say, I can do this thing called acting. So it's like a correlation between track and field and acting that, you know, you pursue and you have faith. Um, you have yeah. to have it too. <laughs> You got to have faith to jump those hurdles. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So um, a professional uh, runner, sprinter, hurdler, uh, athlete, uh, you know, people see professional athletes that are basketball players, football players, baseball players. We only get to see track and field events so often on TV, right? And so um, what is it like to be a professional athlete in that sport, in your sport? Uh -huh. And, and well, um, it's been, it seems like it's been a while ago, but uh, it was fun. You know, you got to have fun doing it. Um, it's very comp ultra competitive. Um, you have to make sure that you uh, stay the straight and narrow because there's ways that you're able to cheat to get as far as you want to get. And I had to avoid those things um, a lot. Um, I never did any of those type of en en enhancement drugs or anything like that. So that's why my career kind of sort of ended early because I made sure that I wasn't going to do that just to, to, to get a, a medal. Um, so I did as much as I could as a, as a hurdler sprinter with the God given gifts I had. And then the old man took over <laughs> and I had to just say, okay, I'm hanging up my, my, my spikes. I'm still fast. I can still use it for tracking. I mean, for not trying to feel for uh, acting, um, which I have done, um, you know, um, because the camera makes you look faster anyway. Um, so <laughs> I need that. I yeah, need it. it makes me look faster. <laughs> so the uh, the attributes I have as an athlete and, and, and martial artist as well um, is that I'm able to use it on camera and and use it as long as I can until I get the old man to tell me I can't do those things anymore. So right, uh, right. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting to me is all those things uh, take such discipline. Yes. Right. I mean, you know, there there are other things uh, that don't take near the amount of discipline as acting certainly takes. If, if you're going to make it a career, if you're going to um, get the parts, if you're going to do the thing right, that such discipline, track yeah. all, all the events you're, uh, you know, you, you might be in a group sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. But mostly you're by yourself. Yes. It, it, it's you and the track. And, and yep. that's it. And so you've got nobody else to fall back on, nobody else to rely on. You just have to be prime. You've you've got to you've got to do it, and that takes a lot of discipline. So it and um, martial arts is all about discipline. And yes. what's interesting to me that um, in in one way it's like, well, of course you'd pick things that are disciplined because it's obviously part of who you are. You know, you you are drawn to those things. But also interesting to me that you would pick so many things that are so, so disciplined. And, uh, you know, like I think about track and field and of any of, of anything that you can do, you can be a football player, professional mm -hmm. football player. You're going to be lifting. You're going to be working out. You're going to be doing the thing. Right. 
Yes. But if you miss a day, yeah, you know, you're probably going to be okay. If uh -huh. you, miss, you know, some time, take a little vacation, you're probably going to be okay. But you've yes. got to be so fit and so ready because every partial second counts for everything. Every and, second, yeah, every right? millisecond, yeah. Um, yeah. Just to, to to PR or to um to of course be better than your PR and personal record um or to just beat the the squad that's coming after you and 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 to at the end of the hundred meter race or something like that. Okay, so like for instance, if you run like a ten five ten two, and everyone else is running like a a nine eight nine nine ten one, you're still here. Everybody's still going here. There are people ahead of you, of course, but it's just that split difference, like. It's, it's crazy and you have to train to make sure that you're able to knock those seconds off um just to be in the in the, in the mix or to win the race and you're you're in the race you're there but it's just that one second makes you look like this this is the lead and you're you're here and it's just only one second and you're looking like you're getting burnt so you have to train to to compensate to get back up to this you know and um it's hard it's hard it's fun um and I, and my, I, I take my hat off to all track and field athletes around the world that still continue to do this. Even people my age, um, they do the master's program. I thought about doing that actually, but I don't know if I have the time right now because you still have to train very hard and you have to have the time for it. And uh, so it's, it's a dream to do it, but I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you can do the senior senior when um, life hey. slows down for you or who knows. Yeah. Because I imagine you stay in shape. You look like you look great. So thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I do that. I, I stay in the gym. I stay in the gym, and I you know still do the martial arts practice when I can, and I still run you know sprints and stuff like that, and do things so that I'm able to um, uh, show that I'm available for stunts because I like to do my own stunts, um, and so that helps. Definitely helps to stay in shape and and to be as uh, as. Uh, is the word I'm looking for, uh, just flexible. Um, cause it's hard, you know, I've done stunts in movies and you get hurt in stunts, even if you're doing 30 to 70%, if you, you know, it, it still hurts. If you, you know, you're still trying to learn how to do a stunt and you, you go, like I said, uh, 70%, it, you will still feel the impact. So you have to stay in shape and stay in the gym and take your vitamins and eat well as, as best as you can and, and be ready. Yeah. 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 Be able to say no to the birthday cake. <laughs> yeah, that and learn when to say no. I can't do that stunt. Let's get an extra. I mean, not a, get a uh, a stunt person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> know where know where to draw the line. Know what your limitations are. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you don't seem to have a lot of limitations, though. I have to say, Michael. Um, I mean, your your acting is is uh so good. You're wow. you're so good at your craft. I everything that I've watched you and I've been wow. so impressed, truly. And, uh, and that, again, you know, we were talking discipline. So as a kid, were you, were you this disciplined as a child? Like, were you the guy, were you the kid that would line up all his matchbox cars and the blue one had to be in front of the red one and all of that stuff? It, was that you? I, I, sometimes I was that kid. And then sometimes I was just a regular kid, just, you know, just trying to, you know, learn life. Um, I grew up in a single family home. Um, uh, where, you know, my mother, uh, did a lot for me and my sisters, uh, and I had to learn, you know, I was always a sponge and always, you know, when someone very, uh, positive in my life as a man, uh, actually men that were positive in my life, I would, you know, take on like, ask them questions and they would give me and feed me things that would help me along in life right now. Um, so I was always that guy that wanted to take care of my mom and provide for her when I got older and, you know, the dream of being a big actor and stuff like that, or a big, uh, athlete, uh, whatever I wanted to do, um, I wanted to make sure I took care of family. So that helped me focus to say, I need to stay on this straight and narrow because, uh, growing up in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area, you know, there was a lot of, you know, uh, ways where you could go and, and get in trouble, as I can say. And so I avoided those. I saw those firsthand and I was like, I don't want that. I don't want that. I just want to go ahead and, and do what I can and, and honor the Lord and, and honor my, my, my family and be the first to do this and do that and whatever. So I was focused. Yeah, I was I was a focused kid. Um, but a lot of times it did blow up in my face and it had to because the Lord God wanted to humble me 
and um, and make sure that I was depending on him to be able to fulfill the dreams that I wanted because he put those in place and placed those dreams in me. And so he wanted me to make sure that I went to him for everything. And so here I am today, That's, still yeah. learning, still yeah. learning how to, you know, to submit to him and, 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 and trust in him and have faith. Right. Well, I think it's a lifelong thing, right? Really to, to uh, learn, to submit, to be in the position where you just hopefully get, I, I don't know that you ever get to a point that anybody ever gets to, to a point where they're like, okay, cool. I got it all down. You know, I, I know exactly how I think it's a work in progress. Always, always, yes. always. So you had a good mama. Yes, you I had did. a good mom. And yeah. she, and, and um, I like that you brought up uh, mentors and, and that you had male role models in your life because it's so important. It's so important for um, boys. It's, it's important for kids in general, but yes. um, the statistics with boys who don't have a, a role model, a, a male um, mentor of some sort, a dad, a uncle, a whoever, a neighbor, whoever it happens to be, somebody at church, whatever, uh -huh. uh, are not good. You know, they're, they're not good. So, yeah. uh, yeah. So what, what do you feel like it did for you having, having a man uh, somewhere, men in your it, life? It, it encouraged me. It did. Um, you know, they told me things that, you know, my dreams and the goals that my mom was like, okay, that's far fetched or whatever, because, you know, my mom was, you know, she was trying to do everything at one time. So she wanted to make sure that I was able to provide for myself when I got older, instead of trying to chase dreams as the first thought, instead of being, you know, uh, grounded and saying, hey, you need a job and then you chase your dreams. Um, so when guys would say, go ahead and chase your dream, go ahead and do it, you know, it, it, it just, it, it helped me a lot. And um, it confirmed that, you know, I was meant to do the things that I was chasing after. And, you know, like I said, you have your, your falls, um, and, but you learn from them. And what you learn from them, uh, from your falls is that you get up, dust yourself off and then attack again and, and, and have fun while you're doing it. And don't listen to what people say that, you know, you might as well give it up and just go ahead and get your nine to five or do this or do that. Or maybe you're not going to go as far as you think. When you listen to people um, that say those things, it can affect you. So you have to you have to run to Christ. You have to run to God. And I thank God for being saved at 13 years old, which was very important in my life, because I don't think I would be the man I am today if I did not give my life to Christ at 13 years old. Um, you know, I, I'd say 11 and 12 years old were my formative years where I was getting in trouble sometimes. Um, and so, you know, I thank God for, you know, going to church, you know, be, begrudgingly forced by my mom to go. And then all of a sudden I like this Bible, you know, vacation Bible school thing. And then all of a sudden I will never forget the guy's name. He's Filipino American, a Felician that introduced me to Jesus. And I gave my life to Christ after, the, you know, the, the vacation Bible school was over and smoking tongues, was water baptized. And, you know, I went out of the church and ran shouting, you know, thank you, Jesus, crying and, and just knew that, you know, what he asked for me is for me and then no one can stop that. And so that just, you know, another thing was God being my father, you know, you know, he, he showed me ways and things that I could, you know, live this life um, and, and be prosperous in it. So um, I do have to make sure that I say that my stepfather, because my mother was uh, divorced as well. My stepfather financially helped me through a lot of things. And he was a great guy as well. He, I just never had a stable father in my household, you know, um, but I love him. And I thank him very much for what he's done for me in my life as well. Um, but yeah, it's always good to have a, uh, it's always good to have your mom and your dad in your household to move forward through this life. And, you know, Satan wants to destroy that. And then look what he's doing in America right now. We have so many single family households right now and our country's going the way it's going because of the lack of participation of fathers in households. Um, and it's not always gonna be the father's fault when it happens, it's just things happen um, as well as, you know, marriages don't work or, you know, it's just really hard to, I don't wanna, I want to say that it's really hard in America to to be a man in today today's world, and so you know there's a lot of fathers that are dealing with a lot of hard things in life that don't make them available, and they're still trying to find their way through life and trying to make up for it or whatever. So 
I won't put down any at all uh, as fathers or anything like that. But it's it's a difficult thing um, living in a, in a in a single family home without a dad. It, it's in it's in it's you need to be there for your children. Fathers, we need to be there for our kids um, and uh, make every effort to try to do that as best as possible. Yeah, well, and like you said, I mean, there's situations certainly that lead to divorce or or yeah. you know, uh, all kinds of situations out there, and and it's never a good idea to judge people because you, know, you haven't walked in their footsteps. You don't know what they've gone through, oh, and no. so you don't know where they're at, and so you know not to judge, but to step up, right? Yeah. So if you're a guy in a church and you know that there's a a mama just trying to do her best and there's no man in a kid's life. Yes. Step up. Step you know, up. Yeah. Right. You yeah. Be that guy for him. And uh, even if it's inconvenient, just inspire him, say something to him. Like one word is a seed of planning for his, his, his faith to, or, 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 or a girl's faith to, to, to blossom um, so that they can be who Christ called them to be. We're all the body of Christ. We're all our brother's keeper. At the end of the, we're all family, you know. Mm -hmm. So you see a child with a mom, uh, you know, it just looks like he's just, you know, uh, doesn't know where he's going or he's maybe troublesome or whatever. Go over there and, and, and inspire him, talk and speak life to him or her, to the daughter or the son. Speak life. You have no idea because that happened to me. You know, people spoke life to me and I am yeah. where I am because they spoke life to me. Yeah, which I love that you're talking about this because it, it's just so cool. It can be so easy, I think, sometimes to see kids, you know, if, if you've never worked with kids, <laughs> even if you're a parent, but you've not worked with kids, kids might irritate you. You know, not not everybody's into kids, but um, don't let them. I mean, people should never be an inconvenience, right? Never. People is what life is all about. I mean, everything else can go away. It's the It's the people that that are important and we should be important to each other. Every single one of us. I mean, we're told to love everybody, not just love people who think the way we do, look the way we do, act the way we do, yes. but love everybody, everybody, everybody. Yes. And, and I'm learning that too in life, you know, that, you know, um, it's hard sometimes to love, now, you know, sometimes a lot. It's hard to love the unlovable, um, but you are going to bless that person and God is going to bless you to to make sure that you're taking we he came to save all of us even the unlovable even the ones that are that that do atrocious things in life which is actually all of us um he came for us and so we have to speak life to those people so that they understand who they are in christ and that they can die, deny themselves deny all those things that make them feel like they're this terrible person and understand how much God loves us. And when you do that, it's day and night. And um, like I said, in my experience, you know, I've seen things and, you know, but at the same time, when I see those things, then somebody comes into my life and speaks something. All of a sudden, I can do this. Oh, yeah, okay. Stay the course, Mike. You know, it just takes that. It takes all of us. And when I, when I want to say for men, you know, just, you know, we got to step up, like you said, Kim. We really got to step up, step up for our kids, step up to other men, uh, other men that are even in their families that have house, households, step up to them and encourage them. It's it, it's like, um, you know, it's viral that demon, demonic activity is happening throughout this world and, and, and it's affecting us. But it's also it, it's, it can also be doubly viral for us to speak life into somebody, even when they're going through what they're going through and things change because Christ is in control. Period. So why not just do that and, and, and defeat the enemy by just speaking life to people, speaking life to kids? Uh, that's our responsibility. And I pray that I get better doing so. I'm still learning life as well as you are, Kim, and everyone else here. But, you know, it's it's our responsibility to speak life and, and encourage others. And that's something I want to do and get better at, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because a, a, a smile can change somebody's day. I mean, it doesn't have to be some big, big thing, but it can be, it can be big. It can be whatever, but, um, but be that beam of light. I mean, we're, we're called to be that right. A light to the world. And so be that beam of light and, and live yes. the life that, that God wants you to live. And it's so, so much happier. I find that there is so much freedom. I did this thing, Michael, I, um, my husband passed away 
15 years ago and I wasn't sure what life was going to bring. Right. Like I was married forever. And, uh, and so I decided I was going to figure out the true meaning of love. And so I dedicated a year to figuring it out. I was in Haiti most of the time. And the things that I found out about love just blew my mind and rocked my world. But I also found out that some of the things that we think are love are not love. Yes. And things that we've been taught about love that are not love. And a lot of it has to do with even our expectations because of what we've been taught. Yes. And love really doesn't have any expectations. Love just loves. It's patient. It's kind. It's, it's, uh, you know, what is that? It's, I right. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't envy, doesn't boast, et cetera. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, you know, a lot of it comes down to that. It comes down to love. And if you, I always feel like you don't have to like everybody, you know, right. I mean, there's going to be personalities. You just clash. You're just <laughs> not going to like everybody. It's, it's just the truth, but loving everybody is a whole different thing. You yes. know, like, that doesn't necessarily like everything that everybody does, but right. he never takes his love away from us. Absolutely. And so yeah. that's to be our thing too. That's right? true. Uh, people do things that you don't like, but you, you, you have to love. And it's, that's a lifelong process to learn how to love people. Um, Cause I think there's different levels. Of, well, there's, there's Christ is love, period. but like how we are, we, we go to different levels because we mature as we understand and how to love and understanding how love is patient and kind and it's not boastful and everything else like you, there's different levels and you, you throughout your life from young to old you you see love differently um uh because of the experience that you build you know you're going to deal with people that are just amazing and you're just going to deal with people that are like man i, I don't even want to be next to this person but Christ knows how to tell us how to love that person, not like what they do, but still love them and encourage yourself to believe that God is still going to take care of them some way, somehow. It may not be you. It may be, it may be somebody else that is on a different level of, of love that can tell that person straight up, you need to do this or whatever and do it in love. You may not be that person, but what you can do is encourage because prayer, it just takes care of that situation you just let them go and say i give you to god don't just say i give you to god and that's it because you're just being mean or whatever but just say i give you to god because i can't i love you and i can't take care of this situation so go go somewhere you know that's the way it is um and we learn we learn throughout life yeah yeah well and i like it too that that um you've gotten down right like i imagine that life isn't just all roses and rainbows and cotton candy but there are there are moments that aren't so great and as an actor you don't necessarily get every part that you go after and so you no. got to deal with that as an athlete you had to deal with uh aging out of the system so to speak and <laughs> <Yeah. you> know, <laughs> so um how tell me about a downtime in your life and and how you came out of it Oh, good question. It's variable. Um, sometimes I'm just studying scripts. I'm reading books. I'm reading the Bible a lot. I uh, go and be normal, I guess, and hang out um, with my friends, travel. Um, sometimes, you know, when it gets like really, really slow, I'm like, man, maybe I need to go back to IT and, and work a little bit more. I got to pay bills. You know, I got kids are in college and one in high school. So you think of those things. You, it's just, you know, you go to a normal process and, uh, but I would say that I do make sure that I implement the Bible in, in my everyday life um, because sometimes, you know, the days are really rough and hard and I need inspiration. I need God to talk to me because I'm like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Um, and people see you and like you're elevating, you know, you're doing different roles and stuff like that. I'm in different movies. And I. I remember listening to other stars, you know, telling their story like, hey, you don't see who I really am or whatever. And so now I'm understanding what they're saying that, you know, you see somebody through the scope of a, of a TV lens and that's it. But you don't see who they really are, what they deal with and stuff or that, hey, they're just regular people like we are. And I'm not regular, but just we're people um, and, you know, they're people like we are. Um, and so I just, you know, I, I, I go through the motions just like any human being on this earth. Um there is no difference in my life 
than the others out there, except that maybe they're I'm saved and they're not. That's the only difference between me and that person. Um, when, when, when people ask me, OK, you, you being a Christian, what, what makes you so different? I'm not different. I'm, I've just been saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And that's it. Other than that, I'm a terrible mess, just like you are. Um, and I'm not saying you came. I'm talking, you know, to, to the people like just letting oh, them know you. that. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sorry. Just letting them know that, you know, what you're going through, I may have gone through it as well, or I may have gone through worse than you have, but I'm no better than you are. You know, better than me. The only thing that's different is that maybe I'm say, maybe, uh, you know, that you're not saved, but I am. And that's the difference that I would love to introduce you to my, my, my Lord and Savior. I, I know I'm going around the, the question, but um, just letting you know, that's my, my daily life. Um, just, I'm just a normal person. Um, doing no more things and uh um i have uh challenges just like everyone else yeah mm -hmm. yeah well <laughs> well <laughs> yeah well everything uh happens for you know a, a season of life a time of life uh, you go through things and i always admire people michael who go through stuff and come out on the other end and are able to then minister to people who are yes. going through the same thing because yeah. it, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. So the Bible says, right. I mean, God tells us that there's nothing new under the sun. And so yes. people, wh whatever anybody's going through, somebody else has gone through it. And there's this uh, immediate bond, I think that can happen when, when you're going through the same thing, because you can truly relate because you, in, instead of just being sympathetic, empathetic, you really know, you can really know what somebody's going through and how they feel. And yeah. I, I always admire people who do go through crap and then they use it to help other people. And it sounds like you're one of those people. Like, yeah, I've done that a lot. Yeah. Especially with a lot of actors, um, you know, cause we all are like in this fraternity, I guess you can say uh, actors and actresses where, you know, we are told no a lot, you know, a whole lot more than we are. Yes. Um, people ex telling us that we, we need to give up um, or, you know, you're just there and then all of a sudden it just poof, it's gone. You're in the green room, you're reading lines of the script and all of a sudden they say, I'm going to give you a call in a week and no call back, those things. So I understand that. And so I, you know, when I hear somebody go through that, I'm like, oh, let me talk to you because I know exactly what you're going through or being, you know, a, 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 um, a son who always wanted the, you know the nourishing from his father uh, or, or the, the, the you know the, the love from a father you know I can relate to that I encourage people about that um being a father I can encourage people about that uh you know just so many things um and so I that is one of my ministries I can say that I do on a daily is to encourage people I was told that I always had the gift of encouragement um so it didn't go to my head but what I did understand is that okay if I do have that Lord God, teach me how and to show me how to encourage others. And it, for some reason, it feels like it's just like like it's uh, second nature to me that I can just do it with no problem. I listen and then I explain or I relate and we have a good conversation and then we're like friends, you know, or maybe it's a stranger and they take it with them. And, and I pray and believe that they, you know, they'll use it and, and, and be encouraged. You know? mm -hmm. And I love doing it. It's it's. Yeah. It's like a hobby of mine to encourage others because I want everyone to make it. I want everyone to know the love of Christ and I want them to be in this new heaven and new earth that's coming after this old world that's decaying. Um, it's important to me. Um, if it's not important for you to do that, then you know you need to ask God why you don't feel like it is important because you want people to make it. You want people to love. You want people to, to live and, and, and to, to be empowered and, and to fulfill their dreams you know because that's what god wants for us that's why he sent his son for us so right right right. you know and you, and you hear people say gosh i'm not sure about my purpose you know what is my purpose what is my purpose and i think really your purpose is to love you know we, we've been given one job just love everybody and don't judge your passion on the other hand people have have different passions and yes. and those are god-given you know they're inside of us for a reason and so yeah. use them, use them for his glory, use them, use them in your life uh, so that you live a life that, that you're passionate about because you're living your passions. And so um, I would think 
that in a lot of families, when their 12 year old son says, you know what, I just want to act. There's probably a lot of families that would go, son, I, I don't know that that's going to work out for you. And fortunately, your mom uh, is an actress and and um, does things, understands that world. But uh, what about men that were your mentors? Did you ever have anybody who said, Michael, come on, buddy, you know, you, it might not be the thing for you or... Yeah, um, I would say my, well, I would say my stepfather um, and just other people like my uncle and everyone. I, I wanted to play in the NFL. I wanted to be a football player. I'm not, as you can tell, a big guy, um, but I'm I'm very athletic at the same time. And I was really good in football. Um, but And really fast. Yeah, and really fast. So I was like, I have all the attributes. Why can't I? And it was just like, they just, they, they people just know when you're not going to make something. Um, you know, I, I think it was because they saw something else in me. And so um, I did play for a while, but I felt it in my heart that I was like, this is not what I really want to do. Um, I really want to act. I really want to run fast. Um, I can do the, you know, the flag football stuff and no contact anymore and, and walk, you know, like a regular person because football players put their, their bodies through a lot of, uh, of sacrifice. But so long story short, it was just like, okay, I understand that it, 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 you know, I let go of the pride and the ego and I was like, okay, let's just go forward with doing this acting and, and the martial arts and, and track and field thing. And then, you know, track and field was over with. And then I said, okay, I'll implement that and martial arts into the acting because I used to compete uh, in, uh, in, in, in Taekwondo as well. But it's like, when you get older, you can still do that, but you are sacrificing your body a lot and you're not as young as you are and then at the same time you get bruised up and, and you get a bloody eye bloody this whatever you want to have that while trying to do an audition <laughs> so right you really want to try to get in the game while you're 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 good get in the game and just whatever you've learned from the past do that and then you know go back to martial arts class or whatever and learn other things without beating yourself up anymore so that's what i had to do and uh yeah, so people saw in me a guy that could really be a good actor, and I took hold of that. It was like, yeah. no, leave the football alone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, be able to walk when you're 50 years old, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so the, the part that you play. Yes. In Undefiled. Undefiled, by the way, for everyone watching and listening, is such a powerful movie. It is such a good movie that touches on things that a lot of movies would never touch on. And I learned some things watching that movie that I did not know um, going into the movie. Like yeah. I, I I, did not know, for instance, that uh, sex trafficking uh, went hand in hand with pornography. I didn't know that. Oh. I, I thought they were just, you know, people who decided to act that way, you know, whatever. But that that people are forced into it is tragic yes. and the movie does such a great job of dealing with that but your yeah. your part man that's not who you are i don't know yeah. if there's any part of that part that is who you are okay. how did you get ready for that part i mean you're this mean dad you're this <laughs> awful guy that that isn't the encourager, the opposite of the, of the encourager, the one that's saying, no, you can't do it, son. You're bad. You're awful. Yeah. How, how did that happen for you? Well, um, I've seen some mean guys in my life. So I'm doing that as well as some of the, my favorite actors that uh, could play really mean roles like uh, Blair Underwood. I don't know if you remember him. Oh, He's yeah. a really good actor. He's not nothing like that, but he plays the villain very well. Um, other, I, I can't think of the top of my head right now, but uh, oh, Chiwetel Ejiofor, uh, who's a, a British, uh, a Nigerian actor, one of my favorite actors as well. He could play a bad guy role and switch up and be the most amazing, soft guy and, and, and good guy. So I'm like learning these guys while I'm studying for this character. And so I did that as well as just, you know, past life uh, from the bullying that you have in high school to um people that you, you know, played on the football team with or whatever that you didn't like or from fathers that I've seen, unfortunately, uh, with friends that I go over houses and I'm like, man, that dude is just mean to his son all the time. You know, those things. And just um, understanding 
the 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 psychology or well not psychology but just understanding what this character mr jennings was when reading the script i'm like man this dude is so mean i don't like him okay use that and um so that's how i became this character i prayed before i did it i prayed after um there were a couple of takes um and i don't i know matt wouldn't mind this matt our director uh where i did it in one take <laughs> like what it's all i need yeah that, i'm like you sure you know like actors like no nah, i can do it better and you're like, no, no, this is exactly what we need. Like the DP and the director are talking to each other. Like, yeah, we're done. Like, are you kidding me? I hope I didn't do something bad. You know, I'm thinking second guessing myself. But yeah, there was a couple of times we did one takes. Um, and I don't want to give the movie away, of course, because I wanted other people to see it. But uh, there is a, a scene where, um, yeah, I can't give that away, actually. Because <laughs> that, would, that wouldn't be right. But uh, he's a mean guy. But at the same time, he's a guy who dealt with things in his past generational curse is real so i had to put that into the equation to understand that this guy is mean but he's mean because of what happened to him so use that so that i can make sure people see him as this guy that is um kind of the bad he is the bad guy but he's not the bad guy and that's the way the world is too we got bad guys out here who are really not bad guys it's just that where they're at and what has been done to them this is who they are and so that's why we have to go out there and encourage them and, and, and help them go to Christ so they can find out who they really are. Um, but going back to the character, it was um, it was an on off switch type of thing, too, you know, um, but you really had to pray so you don't bring that type of character out mm. if you get angry or something like that. Right, right. I would think that that would be it'd be easy to do when you're living the character for however many hours a day. It'd be easy to walk away, go home, and be angry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you have to just kind of pray that away. Is that? Yeah. You yeah. have to. About it. And, yeah. You can't yeah. lash out or, or, or consequences will come about. And that's something I had to learn in life, too. Um, you know. I, I did have my, uh, like an anger problem, I would say. And I, what I mean by anger would mean I would defend myself a lot. Um, being bullied or or just life, seeing things happen that a child shouldn't see at times. And so like when you are forced to be angry, it's like, okay, you can't lash out. You got to restrain yourself. How do I do this? And so that's another thing about fathers being in, in, in children's lives. A father helps with that, believe it or not, um, especially for sons. Uh, it's imperative for a father to be in his life so that there's a lot of angry men around this country right now because why? They don't have a father. Um, they don't know how to restrain this anger that they have. Well, the anger, the seed is planted is that I didn't have a father and now I'm angry. And it goes from childhood to adulthood. And they don't know why they're angry, and the reason why is because they don't have, they didn't have their father. So yeah, so a lot of those things went through my mind and head. You know, I actually wept uh, a couple of times. Uh, you know, during the days I was there, because it's like, man, the father's really going through things too. While at the same time, the son is the the, the young son, and then the older version of them. It's like this is tragic, you know. So I used a lot of that in the equation to be this Mr. Jennings. Um, He's not really a bad guy. It's just that he didn't know how to control what was going on in his life. And he didn't have what his son didn't have. And that's a father figure. Because when you see the movie, you'll understand why I say that. It's just, it's sad. There's a lot of that in households right now. And um, I pray that this movie allows uh, folks to heal and to forgive. Forgiveness is in this movie, you know? <laughs> Um, and I, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure you saw the movie. So like, you know, forgiveness is definitely in this movie. Um, oh, yeah. And, 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 so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so many themes really that that go throughout. And um, there are so many tough situations that are going on in the movie. I recommend Kleenex nearby when you watch the movie. <laughs> I definitely needed it. Uh, yeah. But man, uh, it just... It's our reality, unfortunately. You know, like the sex trafficking is bigger than people know. And it's not, I mean, a lot of underage kids for sure, which is 
horrible, but adult women as well and men too, but um, mostly women. And then the way women are treated, I mean, it's, it's modern day slavery really yes. going and, and, uh, and then to know that if you watch porn, which yeah. 63% of men in church watch porn, 50% of pastors watch porn. If you watch porn, you're feeding into sex trafficking. Yeah. You are. Like if and, nobody uh, was watching porn, no one would be forced to, to be doing it. Yeah. And so the scary thing is, is that the pornography is in mainstream apps or mainstream internet where it's not the dark web. It's just the regular web. So when you scroll to go to ESPN, for instance, because I, I, I encountered this personally, and then there's women with negligees on while you're going to scrolling for scores and you're scrolling for football teams or whatever, because they make money that helps ESPN make money. Mm -hmm. So knowingly and unknowingly, they are contributing to the sex trafficking. It's, it's scary. And if the enemy is at bay. He's, he's so busy with this confusion and, um, and including everything that we, we do in our lives. And, uh, this is why the conversation, um, has to be done in, uh, in groups, uh, men's groups, women's groups, or just the church as a whole. It needs to be in the pulpit. It needs to be deliverance ministries about this. Men and women are, are dealing with pornography like never before. It's in front of our face and people are like, oh, it's being normalized. Why not? Because that's what our, our, mind, our, our minds are thinking. It's normalized. Why not? Because like the way people are dressing now, it's normalized. Everything's becoming normal. Everything that's good is becoming evil, evil, good. You know, and so, okay, we're, when are we going to fight? When are we going to draw the line? You know, um, like that movie, uh, not the movie, but the series, the, the series I watched um, about Christ Jesus. I forgot the name, what it was, but he drew in the sand. You know, it says in the Bible, he drew in the sand. It was like, <laughs> and I see Jesus always, every time that I think about something bad happening, I think of Jesus drawing his finger in the sand, like, okay, when are you going to draw the line? Mm -hmm. um, he, he gave us everything we need to be uh, able to fight the good fight. Like I said before, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, we equip ourselves for the full armor of God before we step out that door, before we look at our phone, before we look at the internet, because right there is the battlefield, is on our phone, it's on our laptop, it's outside the door. You get to your car, somebody comes outside, provocative dressing, then your mind is thinking about that before you're thinking about your job. It's like the battle's here. You can't ignore it. You gotta, you gotta fight the good fight, and you got to address it. You gotta go to the church and make people who don't want to hear it listen because they're going back home and seeing it. That's why they don't want to hear it and they don't want to listen. They don't want to address it because they're dealing with it. But we gotta, we gotta deal with it. We gotta, yeah. we gotta address it. We gotta, we gotta fight. We gotta encourage. We got to um, strengthen ourselves, and you know. And that's what Christ wants for us. He doesn't want us to be the weak, lukewarm church. He doesn't want us to be like the church Philadelphia or Lacadacia or whatever. He wants us to be his church that is mighty. And, you know, I think that when we have our personal battles and we win that day, I think the heavens are rejoicing like, yes, keep going, Mike. Keep going, Kim, you know. And so let's yeah, keep fighting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, fight the fight. Well, and I think that's a lot of it, Michael, is that I... Uh, it, it can be so easy to think, well, I'm just one person. What can I do? You know, right. about yeah. what I do isn't going to make any difference, but it's not true. It's not true because everybody doing their thing, you know, if everybody does a little, everybody does something, then yes. things are going to change. And uh, I, I had a great interview with this guy, Joshua Broom, who was actually, uh, he's a pastor now, but he was the star. He was the top guy in the porn industry, the top one. Oh. And he talked about what a horrible industry it is. So yeah. even the the people that are making the films, nobody's enjoying it. Like it's not, a, you get excited, you get to go to work kind of a place. And the yeah. suicide rate is very high. Yeah, very, it is. So close to committing suicide and has known so many people who committed suicide. So it's, there's not victimless anything about it. Yeah. It is destroying lives within the people that are doing it, destroying yes. lives because of the sex trafficking, 
destroying yes. lives because uh, the addictions that are happening, destroying lives because you watch it and it is going to hurt your relationships. There's nothing positive, nothing victimless about it. Everyone's a victim from the watcher to the performer. Uh, everyone really is. The only guy maybe that's happy is a guy that's making all the money. I don't know. And then but, he or she is not, not, not happy afterwards because at the end of the day, you get all the money. Now you want the power. You crave power. Mm -hmm. This is what's happening now. It's about the power and control. And that's what the porn industry and sex trafficking is about, power and control. The money comes and then all of a sudden they get bored from that and they want more and more and they get more creative and get more demonic and more terrible. And that's why we have to end this, you know, because they're making billions and almost trillions of dollars of sex trafficking and porn. Like, where are, where are our minds right now? The Lord mm -hmm. is not happy about this. This is why we must understand and know that we have to get of our lives to Christ because when God comes in and brings his vengeance, we have no idea. We don't want to know what his vengeance is going to be. You think the boogeyman's bad. Like, it's it's going to be terrible. So with the sex trafficking, when it comes to kids, you know, like what uh, uh, Christ said, or, or like, uh, basically tying a mouse, mouse stone around your head and, and drowning yourself when you touch kids or when you, you uh, uh, influence kids with these terrible things, these, chil these children, they need us. And we're out here promoting because we're selfish and we want this money and, and this thing is great and it's normalized and blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. You're going to die one day and you're going to leave these kids behind. And these kids are going to become even worse than you or they're going to be lost and, and, and they have to be victims and not be empowered and not will know what to do because of how you lived your life. It's time to stop that. It's time to be Christ-like. It's time to help. It's time to be there. It's time to step up, like we said earlier in our conversations. Don't be going after your lust and offer your money and your and even your dreams. You know, sometimes you have to put your your dreams aside so that you're able to help these these kids or during your dream pursuits. Help them while you're on your way. Help them so they don't make the mistakes you did and stuff like that. And um, it's just uh, I, I'm I'm trying to hold back tears because these kids need us, man. I yeah. know how I wanted the attention as a child uh, to, 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 to live just, you know, a, a life that, you know, that, that I wanted to be loved and I felt loved. A lot of these people, a lot of these kids don't feel the love. They don't feel it from their parents now. They don't feel it from the society that we have now. And that's why they're running to drugs. They're running to over-the-counter drugs. That's why they're running to porn. That's why they're running away and getting involved in sex trafficking because at home, is where we as priests need to take care of our kids and, and, and empower them and, and, and pray over them, anoint them, talk to them, encourage them. If we do those things, that porn industry and the sex trafficking, uh, their figures start to dwindle. Um, we can, you know, like the movie I've done on the father and all that, we can put that out there in movie theaters and stuff like that. That's great and all of that. But at the end of the day, it's us that has to take care of it in our homes. Uh, yeah that's yeah so true yeah right right well and and I, I think you know you've you've made so many good points today and uh one of them that I think uh is that you kind of have to take a step back from life sometimes because that's it's true. so easy to just go with the flow you know whatever's going on you're going with it right and if you look at like tv and movies in the 1950s tv and movies today you know, besides what's coming out of like great yeah. places, like, like what, what, um, what you did with undefiled and, and so many other really great things that are coming out right now through great American peer flex through angel yes. studios, whoever, right. Yes. Um, Kendrick brothers and the Irwin brothers. And I mean, there's good stuff happening, good but, stuff. but if you look at the majority of the stuff, man, if you would have watched it 20 years ago, you'd, want to wash your eyes out or you'd whatever if you were a kid you'd get in trouble for watching that stuff and it's just kind of mainstream every day and yeah. so it's like with everything you got to kind of take a step back and go gosh am I just uh in it because this is the world today you know is this really what God wants for me or should should I be looking at things a different way and yeah yeah 
different way and uh, look at look at it the way he wants us to look at it. Um, his intentions for us is so amazing and so pure, and yet we, because of the fall of man and sin, you know, look where we're at now. Like you said, 1950s to 2024. It's like it's a totally different, complete world of depravity. Like right now, it's you know, it's it's wild, and um, I I can honestly say, you know, I'm thankful that my mom did what she did for me in my life um, to help me to understand and know and did the best she could, you know, knowing what a man should be. But at the end of the day, like I said, the fathers, they are, they are a mainstay for sons and daughters. We become, uh, we become whole, more whole when we have our mom and dads together um, to be able to help us. Even if it's, you know, unfortunate divorce or separation or whatever, be there for your child and don't keep your children away from one another because at the end of the day these kids are going to grow up and when they see what they see in the households it's going to help them want to move closer to what's bad out there and then you're sitting there looking at each other like i don't know why my child is the way he or she is the way they, they are well it starts at home and the porn industry jumps on that so fast. The sex trafficking jumps on that so fast. They crave for those type of things to happen so that it's more business for them. Right, right, right. And catch them young, catch them young, you know, just like smoking and other things, you know, the younger you can catch them, the easier you get them hooked. And yeah, and then, right, then it's going to put money in your pocket. And so it's sad, but... um I, I've loved this conversation because you. you're just been so great. I mean, the, the information that you've shared and the wisdom that you've shared and the encouragement that you've shared, which I think being coached for a lot of years, you become a coach. And, you know, I, I think well, that part of being encourager is, is coaching. And so, yeah, so you're obviously a good coach too. Yeah, I'm going to be long-winded and go around the, the question, but I, I eventually get back there. <laughs> No, you did a great job. I, I appreciate all the information. And I would say, so if you were to give, we're almost out of time. If you okay. were to give one piece of advice, what what would your advice be? <sighs> or, or I'm going to let you off the hook a little bit. Okay. If you have somebody that's, that sticks in your head, a piece of advice that you were given, that is like one of the greatest things anybody ever said to you. Okay. So either way. Okay. Well, um, I'll say this from an actor's perspective. Um, my, my, my teacher and coach, uh, show Felicia Rose always told me that the audition, the audition is always ongoing. Um, and the reason that is, is because, you know, if you book the role, okay, you have a responsibility now after you book that role, you show up, you have to be your business on that set. Um, and people are looking at you and just because you booked that role and you're going to probably do very well throughout the, the t duration that you're on set, they're looking at your behavior. They're looking at you in every aspect to see if you're bookable for the next film, to see if they just want to be your friend, to see what is it about this guy or girl that, that gravitates me to him or her, you know, or why is this person, I don't feel comfortable around this person because of the way you're acting. The audition is always ongoing. Um, always present yourself the best you can. And and I pray that if you're in Christ, that you represent the body of Christ the way you're supposed to represent. And that's just by out of love. Um, and you will go far in the industry, uh, whether it be a faith-based film or a secular film, because um, I take uh, the risk sometimes doing secular films where I'm trying to represent Christ there as well, because you can't just stay in a faith-based film and and um, think that you're really doing something you got to go out there to the dirty dirty as well and mm -hmm. so when you're at the dirty dirty you still represent christ and the audition is still ongoing because god is going to do things for you to help those that need him and that's why i say that's a, a piece of advice i can give to them people who are in christ people who are unsaved i just say please give your life to christ um he loves you so much and you can do all things through him you're more than a conqueror just uh, you know, just just give him a try because 
after that, it, it, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be a beautiful relationship and everything that you have and everything that's under you is going to be beautiful as well. It may be rough at times. And then, of course, our life here on Earth is not always easy. Sometimes it's a whole lot worse when you give your life to Christ. But God is going to protect you through everything. And nothing, no no weapon formed against you shall ever prosper. Sorry about that. Um, oh, yeah. No weapon formed against you shall ever prosper. And uh, I just encourage you. And uh, I would, you know, I, I just encourage you <laughs> to give your life to Christ. Yeah, definitely. Because it's it's rough out here, guys. It's really rough. Yeah. And I, I have faith. Yeah. Yeah. Because because there's good. Because there's good out there. And, and, yes. And so Whole lot. after the good. Right. Right. Michael, thank you so much for everything you do for people. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining me on the show. I appreciate it a ton. And it's been an absolute joy talking thank to you. you. And so thanks everybody for joining us and until next week, be blessed.